Today I'm talking about a shift in community. You know, there seems to be a whole lot of, uh, have you noticed there's a lot of anger, <laughs> a lot of frustration, uh, a lot of an absence of joy wherever you look right now, like especially if you watch the news. And, uh, my friend uh, Robert uh, pastors Gateway Church. He has a problem with his back, and stress especially uh, affects his back. And so a couple of weeks ago, he, he had gotten, a, he had gotten a, a, some chiropractors to work on his back, and everything was good. He went on vacation. He came back from vacation, and his back was worse. The doctor said, what's wrong? He said, and Robert is thinking, how could my back be worse? I've been on vacation. And he thought, I've been watching the news. I, he said, I watched the Democratic convention, then I watched the Republican convention. No wonder there's stress all in my back. Well, we need to be the people that's showing light and salt and wisdom and love and joy and peace. We don't need to get caught up in a lot of the stuff that folks are caught up in. We'll be looking at that. We'll be looking at that some. But our enemy, is all he's doing is working his age-old plan to divide and isolate so that he can conquer. But the Holy Spirit is shifting God's people toward the victory that we only find when we're unified, when we're in community together. Any of you remember way back when you were in junior high? Anybody? I can barely remember. You remember, you're just trying to fit in. What group do I fit into? And I've got to find the group that I fit into. And, and, and I think there's an innate desire in us to fit in. There's a desire in us to belong somewhere. Like that old Cheers TV show years ago where everybody knows your name. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about community. And that English word community comes from the Greek word koinonia, which means communion. It means fellowship. It means a shared life, mutual participation. It means a sense of belonging. Now, when you're looking at a world that looks like anything but a sense of belonging, everyone seems divided, how beautiful and how precious would it be to view some folks that belong somewhere? Better yet, belong to some other people that belong to them as well. That they're no longer alone. They're no longer given to fear. But on a basic level, our church practices community and fulfills God's great commission in three ways. Let me tell you about that in a minute. Every August, at the end of August, we talk about how things work around here. We start ramping up for September when we start new groups and when we, we start renew starts back up. Our children, everything starts. We kind of go like the schools do, the, the fall semester and the spring semester. And that's what we're doing. Last week we talked about youth groups. Today we're talking about small groups. But we practice community, and we, and we follow after God's command in three ways, around three basic ways, and that is services, small groups, and transformational events. Let's say that together. Services, small groups, and transformational events. I know that third phrase is a little long, but we'll get to it. Services are where you're at right now, Sunday morning service, where we gather and we worship and we pray and we, we talk about the word and we try to find application. Transformational events are those things that are beyond us. They are beyond us. Things like, things like we've got fall jam coming up. We've, had, we've sent people to England. We've, we have evangelism, door-to-door -door things. We get, have worship and prayer gatherings. We do prayer walks. We do treasure hunts. We help the poor. We help the homeless. We're trying to do those things that are beyond us. That's what a transformational event is. And so that's one of the things that we do as well. But today we're focusing on the third part of that, and that's small groups. Small groups. Here at the fellowship, we refer to three kinds of small groups. Core groups, community groups, and special interest groups. And Greg Burns, who is over all that, or we might say here under all that, our, we have a reverse pyramid here in our leadership structure. Whoever's leading is at the bottom pushing everybody else out, and that's how we look at things. So our support elder for that is Greg Burns, and he's going to come and share in just a few minutes uh, some more specifics about those three groups. But let me just give you my perspective. Since the early days of our church, we felt strong that no matter how large we grow in number, we never want to outgrow living room fellowship where our life really happens. This meeting here on Sunday mornings will get better when our small group experiences get better. It'll get more real when our small group experience gets more real. You understand what I'm saying? Shake your head up and down so I feel better. 
Uh, you hear me often say that small groups are the hot houses for relationships to grow and spiritual transformation to occur. That's especially true and needed right now. I'm convinced of something after years of being a pastor and seeing what people go through day in and day out and seeing all the stresses and strains on families, no matter what phase of your family life is in, I'm more convinced than ever that connection and community is one of the most important links to our spiritual, mental, and physical health. Psychologists and psychiatrists are just catching up to the fact and they're making statements like this. This is non-believers. You'll never be fully healed until you're in community of some sort. Kind of sounds like man was not meant to live alone, doesn't it? That was, should have been a novel idea that they should have picked up on. But people, people everywhere, everywhere I look is stressed. Stressed and sometimes lonely, frustrated, trapped in sin, needing somebody to talk to. Small groups can create a positive environment for real community to happen. You know, our, our model for small groups is in the book of Acts. I read about it a few minutes ago during worship. Um, they just love to share life together. It wasn't just because they were sweet and just liked people. They were being persecuted. Their very lives depended on each other. They had just made a tremendous cultural, religious shift that changed their whole world. They were not in the cool group anymore. They were in that radical bunch of troublemakers. You know what the, the best translation of church in the New Testament is? M-O-B, mob. Rebel rousers. The church is a mob to most people because we, 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 we swim against the flow. Uh, we, we provide a contrast to what's comfortable for some folks. Because we live in a different way than a lot of people live. Well, how did they, how did they show uh, their life together? And how were they able to, as a church, they wanted to tell the whole world about Jesus. And they didn't care who knew about it. Well, they did it by preaching and teaching and through the example of godly lifestyles lived in community. This has been our goal since the early days. And well, how did they live? If you'll read Acts on your own time, if you read Acts 1 through 4, you'll get a real glimpse of how they lived day to day as they were ramping up to this, this great shift they were about to make. The early church wanted the world to know about Jesus. They did it by preaching and teaching through their godly lifestyle and lived in community. And here's, here's how they lived. It says in Acts 2, 42 through 47, I'm not going to read it because I already have, but it said they lived in devotion to Jesus. Which meant, it translated, they were passionate about some things. It mentions four things. One's the apostles' teaching, and that's, that's what's in your Bible, the apostles' teaching. They were devoted to fellowship, like I just said, koinonia, that communion, that shared life that was expressed on a daily basis. And they were devoted and passionate about breaking of bread from house to house. And they were passionate about prayer. And I know I keep embarrassing the creatures, but I'm so glad they're here. They're helping us to take this, uh, this level of prayer up. And I just want to honor you guys again. Let's just give them an applause for what they're doing. I just thought last week, let's, let's get that middle jar, which represents people that we love, that we want to see saved, and let's go get it prayed over. And I heard a terrible rumor this morning that they, they baptized those marbles this morning as an act, of, as a prophetic act of what they want to see. They poured water down in those marbles, so at least they're clean for now. <laughs> so I'm really excited about that. <laughs> a good prophetic act. Well, what does devoted mean? It, it means they practice what they preach. They live this life on a day-to-day -day basis. They lived in community with each other. How did they do that? Well, they said they continually met together in the temple course out in Solomon's colonnade in this big open space in the middle of everything. They went out there and met even though they knew it was going to mean persecution. It was also going to mean that salt and light was going to get into the marketplace. And they went out and lived this life out there. But here's where the real power came from, I believe. It said they broke bread from house to house. You know, most great world changes started around the table. Table fellowship is more important than you know. Some of the best ideas that we'll ever get will happen with a few friends around someone's table. Amen?
Small groups are very important to us. And that lifestyle bore real and lasting fruit. Said they enjoyed great favor with all the people. And said the Lord was adding to their number daily those who were being saved. Let me tell you what our hope is real quick. And I'll finish with this. Our hope for small groups is that we accomplish three things. One, to care for those the Lord has entrusted to us. To just care. That has pastoral elements. It means experiencing community with others, offering a supportive environment where people can be prayed for and ministered to. Our first responders to pastoral needs is in our small groups. That's where people ought to know you well enough that they're not going to take your saying everything's fine when they know things aren't fine. I got some friends in my life that say, how are you doing, Wayne? I'll say, I'm fine. They'll say, no, you're not. Tell me the truth. Okay. When I was seven, I know I saw you need some people in your life that know, that know you and can press through that veneer and get down to where you live. The second uh, thing we want to see small groups accomplish is to find ways to invite and include those who are coming to the Lord. We do that by creating an environment of hospitality, invitation, acceptance, and encouragement for those the Lord is adding to us. We don't want folks to feel they can't break into our little group. We want to see a real wide ramp. If they can get right on with what we're doing, we can be with them. And then the last hope that we have is to serve God's purposes beyond ourselves. Now listen to me. This involves an intentionality about being missional in our day-to-day -day lives. Amen? We're not just trying to get through life. We're trying to help others overcome life just like we are. Amen? Greg Burns is going to come, and we call him often the most handsome elder. And you can be the judge of that. But here comes Greg. He's going to share with us about small groups. Greg Burns. Oh, and Greg always carries an entourage whenever he comes. We are really, really excited to share this, uh, what we've been working on with you guys. And I just, my face, the head just got locked to my collar. Hang on. Okay, there it is. Sorry, I thought I was going to fall down. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Is Brandon Holt here? Oh, Brandon one time, somebody told him he was cute. And uh, he said, give me a knife. He was going to scar himself. He just couldn't stand that. He was like, I wanna, oh, I don't want to be cute, but he is cute. Um, he can't hide, hide from it. Now, we're really excited to bring this. We've really been focusing over the summer on what, what do we want to do long term as a focus and as a plan with small groups. And we've, we've spent a lot of time in conversation about it. We've, we started off by, by really looking at what are we kind of already doing? You know, what's already out there? What's in people's hearts? What's resonating with folks? And then trying to then maybe sort of form up some structure and support for those things and actually turn this into a long-term, this is what we want to do for a very long time together. This is our, some of our values when it comes to small groups. We believe it is very hard and really almost impossible to become a disciple of Jesus Christ in isolation. Can't do it. We've got to be with other people. We were designed to be that way. We're hardwired for connection. We're hardwired to want to be with people, be loved by others, and love others. That's the way we're built. That's the way we're created. And so in isolation, it's very, very hard to be a disciple of Christ. He didn't call one person. He called a whole group of people. And then he had them go form more groups of people and more groups of people as this, this new thing, the church, began to transform the world. In a very short period of time, it did. Transformed all the world, the known world at the time. The other thing is that we really believe that God's plan A for you in your life is people. We love the miraculous. We love to see something happen, right? We love, I mean, the kids that went on this, on this trip over to England saw healings happen right in front of them saw people's lives transform right in front of them. We love that. But we also know through scripture and through the history of the church that the way God most normally deals with healing 
And, and the miraculous is through other people, relationship with other people. And I heard a very interesting uh, testimony this week, and it's very dear to me because it's, it's very similar to my own testimony when it comes to, to small groups. This is a guy that's very influential in the church uh, today. But he said when he was in college, he was isolated. And, and, and at one point, he realized that he was depressed. He was in the depths of depression. And one of his friends recognized it and said, look, you're not doing well. I want you to come start coming to this group with me and just, just spend some time with us. And so he did. He starts going to this small group, and this guy pursued him, pursued him every week. Hey, I want, I want, I want you to come to this group with me. I want you to come. So he gets plugged in. He's there. He's really kind of starting to enjoy being there after a while. And he'd been praying, God, just, just heal me from depression. I just need you to heal me from depression. I need you to deliver me from depression. He was really going after it. And about a year after he, he had started going to this small group and been really plugged in, he was, he was outside and he was looking at the sky and he was, he was like, man, things are just wonderful. And he goes, I've been healed of depression. Right? And he just kind of looked around and went, oh, I'm not depressed anymore. And he said, but God, I, I wish you had done it. And he heard, <laughs> right, y'all know where I'm going with this. Instantly he heard, I did do it. I did do it. I did it through that group of people you with, have been with for the last year. That was as much of a miracle as it happening in a split second. And then he had a group of people around him that walked through. He's still friends with some of them. And I had a very similar, so as a young man, very similar sort of experience with small groups coming out of the same sort of stuff. So if we've got that overview we can put up, we wanted to kind of create a really simple thing to show you. This is what we're doing uh, for small groups. Can you all see that well? Yeah, that's good. I, I did a very crude version of that, and I think Stacy cleaned it up for us, which I'm very proud of. Um, we got three areas that we want to focus on with small groups, right? We've got core groups, community groups, and special interest groups, and they work out in concentric circles. Core groups, very simply, are things that we might see as being very uh, necessary to the Christian life. They'll probably be here at the building. We'll do them like on Sunday mornings or some other night of the week. But it's stuff that we look and we go, man, we really want to get this into people in a context that we can spend time with folks and really engage in life together, right? So we'll advertise those. We'll, we'll have them for usually some period of time, six to eight weeks. Um, but they'll be sort of core. You'll probably see four or six of them throughout the year. But those will be kind of a little more around the, around the church here. Then... As we kind of move out, you guys are familiar with community groups. We've, we've had those for, for quite a while um, before I was uh, even, even uh, associated with FOC. But we're, we're looking at maybe doing a little bit of a shift with them. And, and the little bit of a shift is we want to really see these community groups, these, these groups of people become a, a much more sort of, sort of pastoral environment. Right? We, want, we want this. We're, we're family. right? Didn't we, we sing just a little bit ago, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a son of God. I'm a child of God. If we're, child, if we're children of God, if we're sons and daughters, that means we're brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters live in a family together. And we help take care of each other. We live life. We go through hard things and good things. We, we mourn and we celebrate with each other. And so community groups are very key to, to building that sort of community with each other inside the body of, of Christ. I um, want Chris to come here in just a, just a second to kind of talk about, we, he's actually starting a, a community group that's a little different than we've done in the past. It's not sort of all year, it's going to be a piece of the year, but just to give you an idea of what community groups might do um, together. Go ahead. We'll, we'll be out front. If you're interested after, we're just going to say that all these groups will be available, and Greg will tell you that here in a minute, so we can talk some more if we need to, but we just thought in our world, you may be the same. If you have kids, it's just crazy. Time is a, time's a commodity that you trade a lot of stuff for, so if you want something, usually you're trading something for your time for it. And we said, you know, why don't we do a group where we just do it with our kids? So what we're going to do is on Saturday nights, there are, there'll only actually be four because we'll have September, October, November, and December. Um, so it'll be on Saturday night. There'll be six days here at the church. We are arranging child care for zero to five. So if you have children that are zero to five, at some point after we've just eaten together and hung out, the little ones will go, but the rest of the time is just meant for us to be together. So when we worship together, talk together, pray together, we're going to do it as a family. 
Um, so we just really believe in something strengthening there, not only to display to our kids, but actually for a connection for moms and dads. And then we're going to do some stuff that will just be fun together. So we'll produce some, some fun times in that too. Groups worshiping together, table fellowship together, prayer together, learning together, all of those things that we might uh, might do. And each group's going to look a little bit different depending on, and you'll see all the groups. He's right. As you leave out today, we're going to have every group represented out here with the people that lead and host. So you can stop and talk to the community group leaders and, and see if there's one that you felt drawn to joining and signing up, signing up for. Next ring out, the furthest ring out, special interest groups. These are interesting because in, in short, this could be any group that gets together around a common purpose centered on Jesus. Okay, we've got groups all over right now. Uh, examples could be, um, you know, a, a, a young mother's group that meets in the park and they let and their kids are playing and they're just hanging out together sharing life together, praying for each other, li lifting each other up. That's a, that's a small group. That's a small group. It's centered around uh, community around Christ. Um, we've got a couple others I want, want you guys to hear from them about because they're, they're vastly different groups. But they're both special interest groups reaching out to uh, a particular community and, uh, and, and bringing the life of Christ to people. Go ahead, Edwin. Chief. Can you hear me now? All right. First off, I want to give credit where credit is due. Travis is the one that came up with the crazy idea to baptize the, the marbles. <laughs> but of course, I agreed with it. But what I noticed, and this is the prophetic thing, that there was some crud in the, in the jar that came to the top. And I didn't mention that to you, but that's the prophetic sign that the crud now has come up. And so we're going to look for them to be saved. Um, anyway. Uh, now, you gave me 40 minutes to share? 40? Oh, 40 seconds. I, w I w want to say our, our group is called In His Presence. We meet at 6.30 every Tuesday, and it's the best group there is. So you don't really have to listen to the other groups. Okay? <laughs> okay, just 6.30, Tuesday night, every week. The, the heart of this group is... Is, that is first and foremost is the passionate pursuit of his presence, of the presence of God. It's all about Jesus. It, it, it's intimacy. It's relationship with the Lord. Uh, I believe the greatest commandment is that we love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our, our being. And, and, and the second is like it, that we love other people. This happens in that small group. It's, it's where we get to love on the Lord. Um, I believe everybody knows that it's important to uh, get in his presence. It's important to spend time with him, and, and we're all busy. And so what we've done is cre we created a block in your week, 6.30, Tuesday, every week, <laughs> for you to come and get in his presence. Um, what does an in his presence group look like? We spend time in vertical worship. That means... We close our eyes and we adore and worship the Lord. We do this with live music. It's pretty awesome. We, sit, we learn to sit at his feet and touch his heart. We learn to wait on him in his presence and he speaks. In his presence, true faith becomes reality. We become lovers of God. And, and, and this is the goal of, of the group. We adore him for who he is. Adoration uh, expands the view of God. Adoration gives you a, an expanded view of God. He becomes bigger than the problems that you face. Faith is easy when you see God bigger. And so we adore him for who he is. He's the almighty God. Uh, nothing is impossible for him to do. He's the abundantly available God, 24-7. He's never too busy. This is the kind of adoration that we do. He's the redeemer God. He redeems lives. He redeems cities. He loves us. He's the supplier God. I'm saying this to give you an idea of what it feels like in the small group. 
You know, when you know that he's the supplier God, when you're worshiping him and you're just declaring who he is, that's who he is in you. It changes your view. Then you can trust him because he is the supplier God. He's the wise God. He's the healer. He's the one that heals. He's the lover God. He loves us. He loves us more than you know. But when you sit in his feet, you start experiencing that love. In his presence, when his presence manifests in the room, we, we learn to sit and wait on the Lord in his presence. Sometimes it feels a little awkward because we get quiet. You know, we're, we're kind of in a prayer meeting here and nobody's saying anything. But what we're doing is practicing sitting, waiting on his voice. And he speaks. Sometimes it's a, a picture. We, we might have a topic. We might have an issue that we want to pray for. But then we wait on the Lord and he gives us a picture or a song. We'll sing over them. He gives us scripture sometimes too. Imagine that. So whatever is on his heart is what we want to pray. And that's what we end up doing in the group. And, and so uh, in his presence, true change comes. The more we can get in his presence, the more change comes. Even if you don't say anything, just sitting in his presence. Is it my turn? Uh, Jason and Jamie and I all go to in his presence, and it's an incredible time. Um, just love that group. Love Ed and Melissa and their heart and their hospitality. And um, just to let you know, you can be part of more than one group. I think I'm kind of up on the list of how many groups I've been part of. So if y'all want to catch up with me, get in some groups. Okay, I have another clarification to make. Inspire is the name of the overall term we use for women's ministry in our church body. So if you are a woman or a young lady, you are part of Inspire. And you are cordially invited, officially invited to anything we have. Any kind of group, class, uh, outing, uh, retreat, you are all invited. Okay, let that, let that be an understanding. Uh, we want every woman to feel included and needed and wanted because you are. I know a lot of women uh, struggle with insecurity or feeling left out or um, like they wouldn't fit in, or whatever the issue may be. We all struggle with things. That's why we need each other. And so um, if when, when we have things available, which we're getting ready to have quite a few things available, please take advantage of those and get into community with other women. Uh, it's amazing what God does among us. Um, the overall goal of Inspire is to create and nurture relationships among women. And it's not just for the women in our body. Pretty much every time we've had a class or a retreat, there have been women from the outside this church body that have come alongside of us, and it's been uh, a blessing for everybody. We have a class starting up next month following the retreat. I'll talk about retreat in just a minute. We're going to do another Priscilla Shire teaching. We did a teaching of hers last semester called Fervent. Uh, Connie Gulick opened her home, which was wonderful. We got to meet there, uh, and it was incredible. So we're going to do another Shire uh, called the Armor of God. Deborah Ellsworth is going to offer that class on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock in this upper room. Um, it's a DVD teaching series. There is a book involved, and we'll be out in the foyer to tell you about the, the details on that. That particular class will start October 2nd. I'm going to run the same DVD series starting the Tuesday before. We're going to meet on Tuesdays at noon in that same room. Okay, so that's, that's a small group there. Also, um, we are going to have um, an informal small group that's going to start this week on Thursdays at 2 o'clock. We're going to call Meet at Midtown, uh, the Midtown Coffee House downtown right by, well, it's at City Mall right next to Quiznos. We're just going to start meeting there just for visiting, for fellowship, uh, share a cup of coffee or a tea, and just come, you know, share your life together. When we were, met at uh, Connie's house and did the fervent class, we started the practice of exchanging prayer requests. Every single week, you, you traded with somebody and trade with somebody different each week so we could all get involved in each other's lives and, and pray for one another. So um, prayer will definitely be a part of the uh, Thursday afternoon, but other than that, there's no agenda, there's no book, there's no nothing other than getting together. 
So I hope you can uh, take advantage of that. We'll do that through the months of September and October. And then lastly for today, our retreat uh, is coming up in about three weeks. Uh, it's gonna be phenomenal. We have a committee of ladies who um, are going to be our speakers. We have, among our own body, women will do our presentations. We have not had to invite people from anywhere else to come and be our speakers because we have a talented and gifted group of people right here in our own church body. Uh, God is blessing us tremendously. Uh, he is already speaking powerful words uh, to these women who are going to be presenting. And so I encourage all of you to come out. Uh, there's cho You can choose to spend the night there, or you can choose just to come for Saturday, which is the big spiritual growth day is what we call it. So, um, again, come out to the foyer and visit with us about that. So one of the things that hopefully you'll see is that our, our hope with uh, especially special interest groups is as they, they become more and more established is that they're reaching deeper and deeper into the community that's around us. That we're going to, our hope is in, in a couple of years that we can look around and there are just little small groups all over the place. Just all over the place. Little pockets of life going on. Reaching out to people. I guarantee this group of women that are going to meet in the coffee shop are going to draw all kinds of people that aren't a part of, part of this body. And that's the point. That's the, I mean, just there's nothing more attractive than a group of believers that are you know, experiencing the love of Christ. There's nothing more attractive than that. And I think that's what we're going to start seeing with some of these small groups. Now, in, to encourage some of this uh, furthering out uh, away from ourselves, uh, Chris has a, a, something to tell us about from missions. Well, so we, when we build a missions budget, we do it like we do our regular budget. It starts in July 1. And so one of the things that we felt like we wanted to include in this year's budget was availability of funds for groups like this. So it's coming through a filter of missions. So it goes like this. If you want, if you want or need funds to do something for a, a group, a small group outside of the house, it would go like this. You can apply for dollars, real dollars, <laughs> not monopoly money, real dollars. You can have real dollars couple of prerequisites because it is missions. So we said, here it goes. You've got to invite people in your group. Half of the population of your group cannot be part of Fellowship of Christians. It's rule number one. So I don't care if it's moms. I don't care if you go drink coffee. I don't care if you go play golf together. If, if half of your group does not belong to Fellowship of Christians, you, you can apply. Secondly, some part of you have to bring Jesus into it. Okay, so me and Mark just can't go eat burgers with two of our buddies every week and just, and just get it paid for. I know what you're thinking, Mark. So the idea is we're going to exist beyond just us, and we're going to bring an element of our faith to the table. So that means if nothing more than you say, hey, listen, I, I just want to pray for you. There is a door that's going to open. So you're going to, require, you're going to be required at some point of that to share faith, just share life with them. Uh, so pretty simple. But the idea is this, this gets a stretch to think, okay, the topic came up because Tara and I were discussing there was a group that she was a part of and they were moms meeting but you're like we gotta hire child care I'm like well that's a shame you shouldn't prevent a group that would be reaching out beyond themselves maybe you just need to pay for child care for three or four weeks so these aren't designed to be a one-off event where you just go do it it's over it needs to be whether well, it's three weeks four weeks five weeks we don't want it to be a one-time event we're looking for it to be two three four five times that you would meet and be able to develop a relationship but that's it that's the parameter so you can apply for that. We'll have a sheet where you can submit in that, and we really hope that you'll take advantage of that because if you wanted to buy the books and say, hey, we'll do it, do it at your office, do it in your class, do it at lunch somewhere, either way, like we want to provide funds for that so that you can actually begin to think, what else can we do with this? Thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you, guys. One of the things I hope is, is happening is it starts to get you thinking, right? What are some things that I can be a part of? What are some things that I've, God has put on my heart that I see? Hey, here's a need here. Here's a group, people group, or a Bible study that I've been wanting to lead for a while. Um, those things are open. Come talk to me. We'll, we'll help you get it going. We'll help you get it started up. Uh, we're going to be doing some training as well for small group leaders starting in September. Really good in-depth training. We want to equip you guys to be able to handle things. Not just run a meeting, but to actually work with 
with people in your group, setting the right environment um, to see people uh, freed and growing. Wayne alluded to this a little earlier. We are in a, in a really, really divided time period, right? I mean, I was thinking this week, I was just kind of praying about all this stuff and realized we've been talking about generations a lot, the different names of generations and what their distinctives are. We've been talking about personality types, different personality types and their, their distinctives. Um, political parties, their distinctives, differences in those, uh, ethnic backgrounds, everything is sliced and divided up into increasingly smaller and smaller segments. If you just think about the world around us, it is so split up. Even just to look at the church, you go, well, they're Christian, but they're Baptist Christians, right? Or they're Catholic Christians, or they're, everything is hyphenated and split up and divided. One of the names of the enemy, of Satan, is the divider. One of his whole goals in life is to separate us out, divide us up into smaller and smaller groups so we feel isolated and ultimately become ineffective in the kingdom. What we want to do with small groups is start tearing these divisions down. You can't live life with people. You really can't live life with people and keep the walls up. If you're really living life with people and you know them and you see them as an object of grace, you're going to begin to love them when you know where they come from, what their calling is, where they're going, and you're going to be you're going to want to get involved with them and you're going to want them to know you in the same way. I think the church, the the, the largest effectiveness the church is going to have in the next season is when those walls come down. And it's not going to happen with us sitting in our little camps. It's going to happen when we're living life together. There's nothing more attractive. I promise there's nothing more attractive than a group of people that really love each other and love everybody around them. So that's what we're, our hope is for small groups. So we want to take a moment here at the end of service, and we want to, we want to pray for the leaders and hosts of all these groups that we, that we know of and that are potentially coming down the road. There's this amazing little book that uh, Stacy put together that you can pick up as you're going out. And what it's gonna have is it's gonna outline all the little small groups that we have, what they are, where they're meeting, what time, who's, who's leading it, who's hosting it. Uh, we did miss one, uh, we missed the deadline on it, so I'll announce them here in a second. But as I call you as a group, as leaders and hosts, somebody representative, come down here. What we wanna do, the same thing we did with the kids last night, we wanna come down here, we wanna pray for you guys. I want to lift you up and be thinking because we also want you to come down at the end. If you're thinking, I want to be involved in it. I want to lead a small group. I want to do something hosting a small group. So it's just something maybe on your heart. We're going to pray for you as well. We'll open that up in a second. So we'll start with the Artiveries. We've got Travis and Mary Ann. They're going to be hosted at the Whites, I thought I saw Leah over here. I have Leah come down. They just moved into town. We're very happy they moved into town so they could be more involved in uh, what's going on in the church. So obviously we're going to host a small group at their house. Uh, we want to thank them for that. <laughs> We've got the Gulick Howard group, uh, led by Larry and Elaine Gulick, and hosted at the Howards. Why don't you guys come on down? Whoever's here, there we go. Come on down. Pretend it's the price is right. Run down, wave your hands over your head, you know. <laughs> We've got the Hudson George group, which is led by Carl and Becky and hosted at the, the Georges. I know Carl and Becky are out of town, but I, there's, there we go, come on. We've got the Robinson Crumpton group. So we'll have the Cromptons, Julie Robinson, come on down. We've got the Tongue Twister group, Hale Howell group, uh, led by Thomas and Beth and hosted at the Howells. You guys come on. We've got the Abington Burns group, so we're up here, so our wives probably want to have you guys come on down. And Josh and Georgia, they're the ones that are not in this group, but they are uh, gonna be doing a group this year for younger folks. 
All right, Debbie Jones, Deborah Ellsworth doing the, the women's uh, ministry, Armor of God. Ed and Melissa, come on over. They're doing the presence, small group. Steve Bennett, Band of Brothers, one of our longest running small groups that we have had. These guys are faithful. Every Sunday morning, they are down there getting into the Word and praying for each other. I'm, I'm extremely proud of that group. They have been here for a long time. We don't ever want to forget these guys. Now, if you feel like you've had a, a bit of a stirring, I'd like to potentially lead a group. We want to bring you down here as well. We want to lay hands uh, on you and just see what God, God does with that. Go ahead and make your way down on that. Wayne, do you got anything to share? Have anybody left in the congregation besides these? <laughs> He's a good-looking bunch, aren't they? Okay, you guys turn around and face me, okay? Turn around this way. I'm going to pray for you. Turn around either right or left and face this way. I want to pray for you. All right, everyone extend your hands toward them. And Father, I just pray right now for these groups. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to give us a good, a good semester. Father, that we can care for people. Lord, that we can reach out and be invitational and accepting of those that are brand new. And Lord, let us do some things beyond ourselves in these groups. And Father, I just commission them today for this year's ministry, God, and I pray that there will be, well, this, these jars of salvation will fill up, that lives will be transformed, that marriages will be helped. Father, that, that we'll be a, a salt and light in this society. We won't just be watchers, we'll be participants, God. And we'll turn this ship out and we'll go and make disciples in the days to come. So, Father, I bless them in Jesus' name. Now, you guys turn around and face the other way. We're going to pray a prayer to send you out. And I'm going to literally send you out to your tables out through those doors, all right? Nobody else gets to leave. David's going to grab you if you try to leave, I promise. And David's going to have something for you at the back door. Father, I'm going to send you guys out, and y'all physically go to your tables. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for these right now. And I ask you, Father, as they go, it's, it's a prophetic sign of we're going to go into our city. We're going to go into our neighborhoods. We're going to go into our schools. We're going to go into this state. We're going to see this place transformed for the glory of God. And you guys start walking as we applaud for you. Go, guys. Go to your tables. All the way out. Here they come. Now, as they're leaving, would everybody else just stand up real quick? You guys stand up. Stand up real quick. Listen, I know today was kind of insider about Fellowship of Christians, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to get ourselves positioned and organized a little bit and pulled together so that we can go out and, and be a blessing to our city. Does that sound all right to you? Thank you. For, be praying. That this, I get ready this week to talk about the election next week, and promise me if you come, you're not going to get overly mad at me, no matter what I say, okay? All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for today, and thank you for all these that are serving. And Father, give us wisdom as we go and look at these groups and see which one we might want to be a part of. And I pray, God, that you would just use us, Lord God, in a powerful way this year. In Jesus' name, amen.